Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm very excited to do because I'm gonna be doing a full review and seven look tutorials on the newly launched Natasha Denona My Dream Palette, and I have it right here for you. This palette was recently launched as a collection with five different items in it. I personally only was interested in the palette, and this is what I'm gonna be reviewing for you today. And I would briefly do an overview of the collection, full review of the palette, we'll go through swatches, I will show you look tutorials in today's video, and of course I'm gonna give you my final thoughts and palette comparison at the end of this video. If that sounds interesting to you, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give this video a like and I hope you subscribe to my channel today if you haven't done that already. And without further ado, let's dive in. This collection was just recently launched less than two weeks ago and I purchased my palette from Sephora app on the launch date. Unfortunately, it took me over a week to receive my palette. With my work schedule, it took me about a week to put this video together. I had to film in different days and it took me two hours to do all the swatches of the palette comparisons that I'm gonna show you at the end of this video. Palette retails for $69. This is a mid-size palette for Natasha Denona and the palette has a full-size mirror and 15 shades. 13 of this shades in this specific palette are brand new and two of them are existing shades. The black is black and the shade Serenity are existing shades. I am very familiar with Natasha Denona eyeshadow formula. I already have several of her eyeshadow palettes in my collection. However, this is my first mid-size palette from Natasha Denona. This palette was made in Italy and it does have a 24 months shelf life. The outside box and the palette itself look the same. Natasha Denona herself described it as her dream palette. These are all her favorite shades. The palette itself has this velvety soft matte finish, reminds me of the older palettes from NARS. The palette itself does not have a clasp, does have a really nice tight magnetic closure. All these eyeshadow pans are magnetically attached and you can pop them out out of the palette. All the information in regards of shades and the ingredients for each shade are listed on the outer packaging. It makes the palette look nice and clean. The collection was launched with five items, including the eyeshadow palette, the cheek trio, including cream blush, cream base, highlighter, powder highlighter, also lipstick, lip gloss, and a lip liner. Natasha Denona also put a very personal touch to this palette. This is her actual handwriting. This palette has a variety of eyeshadow formulas. Most of her mattes are cream mattes, except these two shades, they are cream to powder. Then there are metallic shades, for example, like the shade Orisk. There's two duochromes, Invention and Thrill, and then we have a multi-chrome, very special shade to this palette. I think I'm gonna start from this shade Instinct. Just start stapling it into my crease. This shade definitely packs really nicely and has a really beautiful color and nice color payoff. Natasha Denona matte shades pack really nicely with more dense brushes because this is a little bit more of like that creamy formula. And then I'm gonna go into this shade Edgy. I'm gonna switch the brush to a denser brush smaller brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Carper Diem. I'm just gonna try to build up this area. I'm gonna use the same shade Carper Diem on my lower lash line. Switch to a denser brush and I'm gonna go to this shade Edgy. Start building up this outer corner. I am not experiencing any fallout yet, you guys, out of all the shades. I'm gonna switch to a slightly fluffier brush and I'm gonna go into this shade also matte called Unity and start blending out this area. It's actually quite pigmented. I'm just following that contour of the initial shade that I placed and staying on the edges. Now I'm gonna switch to a clean, small, fluffy brush and try to blend out the very outermost edge what we've just placed. I'm gonna go into the shade Instinct again. I'm gonna see if I can build up this area. For my lid, I like to go into this multi-chrome shade called Vision. It does have this beautiful shift from purple to green. Beautiful payoff, very creamy formula. Can you guys see the shift? It definitely matches really nicely with everything else that I have going on. Go For my inner corner, I'm gonna go into this shade Spontaneous right in the inner corner and connect 
these shades right here. Beautiful, a reflective, fully foiled shade. Applies beautifully with the brush. I would like to put a different shade in my brow bone right on this area, and I'm gonna go with this shade Thrill. This is a beautiful shade. It definitely gives you a nicer reflection, and it catches on the light really nicely, but this does have glitter, you guys, so I honestly, going forward, I don't think this is the best brow bone shade. Okay, this is the first look with mascara and eyeliner in a waterline. I'm gonna start with this shade Familia. I'm gonna start stamping it right here. What a beautiful shade. Ooh, I love this shade. Okay, so my left eye, you guys already know, it waters all the time. So this patch is that I'm having here is because I just had to wipe out a little drop of liquid out of my eye. So disregard that. This shade works beautifully. So I'm also gonna use the same shade on the lower lash line. I'm just gonna switch the brush. Next, I'm gonna go into this cooler tone matte. It's called uh, Nurture. Start blending out. It's actually very pigmented again. All these lighter shades, they only seem to be lighter, but they actually have a really beautiful color payoff to them. Again, everything blends nicely. It just takes a little bit extra time because the mattes are that cream matte formula. I would like to go into this deep brown shade. It's also matte, it's called Aspiration. I'm gonna use my Raffer 03 pencil brush and I'd like to precisely go and... Okay guys, so I build up the lower lash line and outer corner with this darker matte shade Aspiration. For my lid, I really like to go into this golden shade. This shade seems to have a little bit of texture. It is really pretty, you guys. It's definitely more textured than any other shade in the palette. I feel like I could use an adhesive with this. Let me go ahead and grab one. Just applied a small amount of NYX glitter primer onto my lid and let's see if I can reapply this and if it's going to be a better outcome. Ooh, definitely, definitely a better outcome. This is very, very pretty, you guys. I'd like to use this shade Thrill for my inner corner and for my brow bone. This shade also has a little bit of a texture, but it looks beautiful in the inner corner. However, on the brow bone is not the best. Okay, guys, this is a finished look number two. So I actually ended up uh, using this shade with a flat brush and having a spray it as well, and then applied all over the lid, and I think this is the way to go. All right, guys, let's do a look number three. I like to create something with a duochrome, this shade Vision. However, I do want to make it a little bit more neutral, more wearable. I'm going to go into the shade Carper Diem. This is a mid-tone matte shade, and I'm going to start building up my crease. I'm using my Refer 15 brush. So this shade is lovely and it builds up really nicely. It almost looks like I applied two different shades because I can sheer it out here and I actually using literally the same shade just to build up a little bit lower right here and it builds up lovely. I don't want to cover this corner yet. I just want to create that arch. Okay guys, I just realized something. I totally started with a warmer shade and not a cooler shade. So I'm gonna switch this look to something else that's gonna be a little bit more on a warmer side. And then on this side, I'm gonna do the cooler one that I initially intended to do. So it's gonna be a look number four. So now I'm gonna go into this shade Aspiration. And I would like to build up this corner just a little bit. This brush is great because it is rounded and it is very small. So it's perfect for like smaller areas. Before we get into our darkest black is black shade, I like to do my lower lash line. I'm gonna use my Anastasia A13 brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Aspiration again. And I'm gonna put it right here on my lower lash line, more concentrating towards the outer third of your eye. And when there's really not that much color left, then you bring it into your inner corner, right? So just kind of creating the shadow, but primarily the concentration of color is on your outer portion of the lower lash line. And I'm gonna go into this shade Serenity. This is that taupey shimmer shade. This shade is very beautiful. It does have a little bit of like a subtle shimmer to it. It's not blinding shimmer, it's very subtle. I really like this type of shimmers on the lower lash line. It kind of creates that like smoky effect for you, but it's not overpowering. And I'm gonna use my Smoky Eyes brush 
from Essence. I'm gonna pick up the shade Black is Black and start applying it precisely here, you guys. This is pretty pigmented shade. I'm just pressing it into this outer corner right here. You guys, I am getting a fallout here. I hope this will come off. It kind of cleaned up, but it also kind of smudged a little bit. So definitely when you're using this Black is Black shade, I would suggest you do your eyes first. I'm not blending this black shade. I'm gonna go to my Refer 13 brush and go into this brown shade Aspiration again. I'm gonna pick up a tiny, tiny bit and I'm going to start blending this portion right here. Side to side motion and trying to blend out that black into brown. I'm actually cleaning up the same brush and I'm gonna go on the edge of this black, blending it out a little bit, but I'm gonna try to make little circles just to see if I can blend it out and diffuse it out a little bit. If you wanted to create a little bit bolder look out of this, you can definitely go back to that shade Aspiration and then blend out this edge into more brown tone. You can definitely do that. It's gonna give you a little bit more dramatic effect. I am not trying to be really dramatic. I'm trying to just do you know, like a subtle smoky eye. Have my Refer 03 pencil brush and I'm gonna go into the black as black very tiny bit and apply this here on my lash line with just the very tip of the brush on the very outer third portion of the eye. I want a little bit more smoky effect here. Now I'm taking a flat brush and I'm going into this shade Risk. It definitely has a fallout, you guys. I could try to spray it. Let's see what we're gonna come up with. What a beautiful combination, you guys. I'm loving this. That is a really pretty color. I told you guys, I'm using this Smashbox 8-in-1 Primer Essence. I really think that it has a sticky effect. It really works with spraying the brushes like this. I know it's really expensive spray for that, but it really works. All right, guys, you definitely get a little bit more of that metallicness coming through when you spray this brush, but I think that generally the shade is pretty pigmented. It goes on the eye pretty pigmented, even without being sprayed. And then I'm gonna go into the shade Babies. So I'm picking it up on a flat brush and it just doesn't seem like it picks up, you guys. So I'm gonna use my finger. That is a shade that I like. Feels very creamy, kind of like balmy almost. You can definitely make this look more dramatic, adding lashes, a liner, or extending the outer corner, make it more wing-like. However, I also love it the way it is. And these are all the shades that I used. I really said, girl, don't do it, but then I did it. I did the lashes and eyeliner, okay? So this is a look with eyelashes and eyeliner. And I think it looks much better. It's definitely more dramatic. Now let's do a look number four on this side. I would like to use this shade of vision on the lid. I'm gonna have this tones. I already have them swatched. So as you can see, all the tones are gonna be very cool tone. I'm gonna go into shade Nutri. Take my Refer 15. I'm also building up this corner. The same color, you guys, the same shade. Again, it looks like I am using more shades and it's just one shade. I really, really love when eyeshadows can accomplish that. For my lower lash line, I'm literally gonna do the same thing that I did on this side. I'm gonna go into this a matte brown shade called Aspiration. Apply it right here on my lower lash line. Actually using my smudger brush, you guys, because I want it to be a little bit more concentrated color. And then I'm gonna go into the shade Serenity. Now I'm gonna go into the shade Aspiration. This is a matte brown. I would like to add a little bit more depth right here on the outer corner. I learned something with Natasha Denona formula. Because they're cream mattes and they kind of like stick to your lid, right? You have to go little by little. Like it gives you a little bit more flexibility to blend out the color. I'm going back again and I'd like to Place a little bit more color here. Just to create the triangle, because we're gonna have one solid color all over our lid, and I would like this area to be just a little bit more dimensional. Some people like doing it with pencils. Like they would draw the triangle and then would smudge them, but those like creamy matte formulas of the eyeshadows actually allow you to do that pretty well as well. And then I'm going back with my shade Vision, picking up on my finger and applying it all over my lid. Now adding this shade Thrill into my inner corner. I added eyeliner and lashes.
For this look, I wanted to go with something very light, very wearable, something that you would be able to do in a warmer seasons, spring, summer, or just as a casual basis. Very easy to create look, and the details will be also in the description box. As a big neutrals lover, I wanted to create a very natural and neutral look that is office and day appropriate, very wearable, yet would give your eye a beautiful dimension. This shimmer shade has a very subtle satin effect and this look was absolutely effortless to create. This is quite a dramatic look that I got my inspiration from the darkest shade in the palette. I used a blackest black matte shade all over my lid, blended it out into my brow bone with the aspiration, the matte dark brown shade, then added spontaneous a shimmer shade into my brow bone and finished with the shade of vision, which is a multi-chrome into my inner corner. Also put that on my lips in the center to give that cohesive look. These are the shades that I used for today's look. I started with the shade Instinct and applied it on the arch of my eyebrow. Then I took the shade Unity, which is the lightest coral matte shade, and gently blended out towards my eyebrow. Then I took the shade Edgy and added it to the inner and outer corner of my upper lid to create that halo effect and I use a very small dense brush for it. I took that duochrome shade Invention and placed it right in the middle of my upper lid to give it a true halo effect eye. And then I use the shade Spontaneous for my inner corner highlight and my brow arch and also used uh, the shade Aspiration, which is a dark brown matte shade to define my upper lash lid before I place my lashes and an eyeliner. So, okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorials. I would like to share my final thoughts on the palette. I really enjoy the quality of the palette itself. It's really nice and sturdy. You get a really big mirror. I love that all the shadows can be taken out and put into your traveling palettes. I've been exclusively using this palette for the last week. The texture of the palette, I'm not a huge fan of. I definitely have uh, stains here in the front, on the sides, and inside of the palette. I can see this packaging getting really dirty really soon. As far as the quality of the eyeshadows, I really, really enjoyed it. A lot of people would struggle with using her matte formulas. Use a smaller, denser brushes. As far as the remaining matte shades, I think the smaller blending brush works the best. Make sure your brush is really soft and also work in layers. Her shimmer formulas, they apply nicely with the brush. However, you would get more color payoff if you apply with a finger. That's how I would apply them. Her shade Invention and Thrill, these are the duochrome shades. They have more texture to them. They apply nice with finger and the dry brush. However, the best, the most payoff that you would get if you would spray your brush. The duochrome, I find it easier to apply with my finger. As far as the color story, it is definitely more on a cooler tone, more of a fall and winter type of a color story. After trying this palette and using this palette exclusively for an entire week, I can easily say that this is one of the most cohesive palettes I own. And all the textures blend into each other really nicely. Uh, Natasha Denona's eyeshadow formula is definitely special. It's very different. It's unique. I'm very happy I got my hands on this beauty. Let's compare the Not A Nude to the Natasha Denona palette. The matte swatches are very, very similar. Even some of these shimmers are very, very similar. And this shade is a duochrome. Of course, you won't be able to find the exact match because it's a very unique shade. The swatches from Huda Nude is on top and then Natasha Denona is on the bottom. Look at those mattes, you guys. I am shook. These are swatch comparisons of Huda Rose Gold Remastered palette. Natasha Denona is on the right, Huda is on the left. Let's compare Huda Desert Dusk to Natasha Denona palette. These are the swatches of the most similar shades that I could find between these two palettes. And you guys can see that there is quite a bit of a similarity. Needless to say that there's a big difference between the formulas. Let's compare it to the Soft Glam palette as well. You guys can see the difference between some shades within shimmers and mattes as well, but the darkest tones are very, very similar. Let's also compare it to Modern Renaissance. And these are the swatches. You guys can see 
how much similarity there is, especially on this side. It's a lot of very, very similar shades. And ABH formula is also very soft very blendable very buildable and nice to work with okay guys this sums up my video i hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful if you enjoy eyeshadow palette videos a full reviews and tutorials i will leave my playlist in the cards at the end of this video and i will have this link for you in the description box let me know if you already purchased this palette or you are still deciding or you opted out completely also if you do have a palette let me know if you happen to recreate one of the looks that i shared with you today if you did enjoy this video give it a like and and I hope you consider subscribing to my channel before you go if you haven't done that already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next videos. Bye.